Ever since the early 1800s, we have been reconstructing dinosaurs. Ever since they have officially been recognized in science as animals that once existed on Earth. Now, of course, the early 1800 reconstructions are very different from our modern day reconstructions. The Crystal Palace statues, those are definitely outdated. They're awesome, but they are definitely outdated. And of course, the reason for that is because when they first started out, they didn't have a lot to go off of. Dinosaur was basically a brand new thing to them. They had very little fossil material and a dream, and they reconstructed these animals to the best of their abilities. Fast forward 200 years to today, and we have way more fossil material and a lot of different dinosaur species that have been discovered, so much so that you, it helps us kind of like fill in the gaps of some that are a little bit more fragmentary. We have come a long way in dinosaur reconstructions, as science typically does. You know, science marches on, and as you continue on, you learn new things, and your understanding becomes a little bit more strengthened. But how accurate are modern-day reconstructions? Are modern-day dinosaur reconstructions just shots in the dark? Is it all just random guesswork that is done by the person who's reconstructing the animal? Well, today I want to talk about that. And the reason why I want to talk about that is because I have been scrolling through different parts of the internet, and I've been coming across some some pretty like typical dinosaur memes, mostly like dinosaur reconstruction memes. Like I'm sure all of you are familiar with the hippo meme. You know, I, I think that many of you have seen this before. And either the image will say how paleontologists would reconstruct it or how aliens reconstruct it. It depends on who posted it. Uh, and then it'll show what the actual animal looked like. A lot of times people post that as their like, their argument for how we're reconstructing dinosaurs incorrectly. Because if you look at a hippo skull, it is of course very different from a, uh, from a, from the actual hippo. And they're right. There's a lot of differences between a hippo skull and a hippo with the flesh on it. But using a hippo is not really the best grounds, so to speak. It's not really too accurate when you really boil it down. For one big thing, hippos are mammals. They are, you know, firmly mammals. Dinosaurs are reptiles. They have always been reptiles. They evolved within the seropsid clade, they evolved within the diapsid clade, they evolved within the archosauria clade. All clades, they're comprised primarily of reptiles, and dinosauria is accepted to be a clade of reptiles as well. And one thing that's very important to note is how different muscle anatomy is on dinosaurs from mammals. Mammals have a lot of muscles, especially in their face. I mean, look no further than us. We can move our faces around and do all kinds of really weird, weird things with our face because we have a ton of muscles in that face. That's something that allows us to be so, so expressive, all right? That's, that's because muscles, muscles are there. There's a lot of muscles there. That's something that reptiles don't have. If you look at the muscle anatomy of, say, a modern day lizard, you'll notice that the skull is almost entirely exposed. And that's because there's no muscle attachment points. There's no room for muscles in their skull. And lizards are a great example of this because lizards, they do still have lips like we do, but their lips are very different. Like our lips, we can move around, you know, we can form words and stuff like that. Lizard lips, they're fixed to where they are. You can, they can't move them. There are some types of lizards out there that can move their lips through other means, but for the most part, lizards, they're just stuck with one facial expression. And dinosaur skulls show the same thing. There's no muscle attachment points and there's no muscle scars on their skull, which means that if they did have lips, they would have been similar to lizard lips, as in they would just be fixed to where they are not expressive at all. They definitely wouldn't have looked like hippos. And this meme is used for a lot of different animals. Like I saw one for a pug, which was very interesting because they kind of used the predator as, as a, like how aliens would reconstruct it right there and what the actual animal looked like. Another one was for a leopard seal. And yeah, you know, they're, they're very interesting memes. And the ones that I found actually did it pretty decently because they said how aliens would reconstruct the animal. Because if you're operating under the assumption that the person who is reconstructing said animal doesn't have a good idea of the anatomy of the animal that they're reconstructing or the type of animal that they're reconstructing, they might not hit the head on the nail. You know, they might miss the mark by quite a bit. However, if it's someone who has a good understanding of the type of animal that they're reconstructing, they would do a better job. We'll go back to the hippo. Let's say the hippo is a long extinct animal in the future, and you have someone who's trying to reconstruct constructed off of its skull. Well, assuming this person has a good understanding of mammals, then they would know to look for things like muscle attachment points and muscle scars in their skull. And they would know that there would be lips present as well as cheeks present. And so those things would likely be applied to the animal because that is something that's very standard for mammals as well as the fact that there is evidence to help support it. They probably wouldn't get it 100% correct. Like one of the big things that might be incorrect would be the colors because colors 
that's something that very rarely ever fossilizes. And so, yeah, that's something that's often up to the artist, like what they believe would be the best coloration for said animal, like what coloration would fit said animal. So the colors might not be accurate, but the way that the face would look would be pretty dang close. Again, that's assuming that the person who reconstructs it has a good idea of how muscle anatomy on mammals work. But before we talk about hippos too much, let's move on to another one. I also came across this one. It's an x-ray of a beaver tail, which is cool. Look at that. I'm sure not many people knew that beavers had tails like that because they're used to the soft tissue beaver tail. But yeah, this is what beaver tails look like. And I came across this on the internet. And of course, instead of someone posting it saying, wow, look how cool beaver tails look, instead they're posting it to say, we're probably getting dinosaurs wrong because look at this beaver tail. There's no way you could tell that from the skeleton. Blah. And that is just so frustrating to me because you can tell that beavers have tails like that from their skeleton. No, they don't have like wide vertebrae, like how many people might expect. I don't know what people expected what beaver tails looked like, but... You might, some people might expect that. But if you look very closely to the freaking image that you posted, you can see extra attachment points. They're like those forked structures that extend from each vertebrae and go off to the side. Those are extra attachment points that help support a tail like that. Other vertebrates don't have that because other vertebrates don't have tails like beavers. Dinosaurs don't have that because dinosaurs don't have tails like beavers. That's something that's called comparative anatomy. Comparative anatomy is so simple. Basically what you're doing is looking at the skeleton of an individual animal and then comparing it to other ones. You know, trying to find some similarities so you can get a good idea of the way that it looked like. Now, if dinosaurs had these little like forked structures on their tails, then yes, you could look at a beaver tail and say, well, they might've had paddle tails but they don't have that. In fact, the vertebrae that dinosaurs have, very reminiscent to reptile tails, go figure, because dinosaurs are reptiles, um, which means that they would have been really rounded and just covered in muscle. There's a lot of attachment sites on their vertebrae for muscles. That's why we know that dinosaurs had huge uh, muscle, muscular tails. Obviously, there's some exceptions to that rule. Spinosaurus is quite known nowadays for having a very strange tail because it has like tall neural spines and long chevrons that extend from the vertebrae, creating almost like a paddle or a basilisk-like tail. But again, the Spinosaurus skeleton tells us that it had that. And that's the biggest thing that I think a lot of people don't really understand is that you, they're not shots in the dark. People don't just make things up. I mean, obviously, I think that there's some artists out there who do make things up on the spot, but most of the published artists, most of the artists who actually do work for publications and things like that, they take the time to actually put effort in. <laughs> they have to do a lot of research beforehand and get a really good understanding of the way that anatomy works or the way that even simple stances work just to make sure that they reconstruct these animals accurately. I'm currently reading a book done by Mark, Mark Witten called The Paleo Artist's Handbook. And this is like a very, very detailed book that goes into all of the pre-production work that goes into reconstructing extinct animals. Like, you know, getting a good idea of, again, muscle anatomy and how it sits on the skeleton, getting a good idea of the way that animals would move and so how to properly like pose them in your work, understanding things like phylogenetic bracketing so you could fill in some of the gaps that might be present on the specific animal you're reconstructing, and over Overall, trying to portray the animal in a light that might be realistic. It's a very good book. I recommend reading it because I've been loving it so far. But we'll go ahead and move on to my next section that I want to talk about. That being All Yesterdays. You guys know All Yesterdays? I know All Yesterdays. Very good book. But what this book is probably most famous for, at least for people who aren't really... Uh, you know, on board with dinosaur reconstructions would have to be the end portion, where, of course, there's like a lot of modern day animals like this elephant here that are reconstructed as sort of shrink wrapped animals and are completely different from our modern understanding. A lot of people misunderstand this section. A lot of people see, like, they'll upload these images and others will see them and they'll, they'll think that it's like a critique on dinosaur reconstructions as a whole. Like, hey, see, we're getting dinosaurs wrong because that's how paleontologists would reconstruct a swan. And that's not what this section was aiming to do. This section was specifically aiming to criticize bad reconstructions, a lot of older ones, like when shrink wrapping was, was, was an issue. The whole idea was that the person that was reconstructing those animals didn't have a good idea of the basic anatomy that went behind uh, those specific animals. And so they did some crazy things that were just wild. Like they just, you know, they were a lot of guesswork that was present. It's a criticism on that. 
not on dinosaur reconstructions as a whole or prehistoric reconstructions as a whole. Because let me tell you right now, shrink wrapping is a thing of the past. Have you seen modern day T-Rex reconstructions? Hefty. Gone are the days of simply just having a skeleton and wrapping skin around it. Those are the, that's a relic of the past. That doesn't happen anymore. And again, it's because we can look at muscle attachment points and muscle scars to determine how large the said muscles were. T-Rex specifically has huge, huge muscles. That's why they are portrayed as incredibly hefty in most modern day reconstructions. Just look at prehistoric planet or look at Walking with Dinosaurs, or Prehistoric Kingdom, or even the most recent Jurassic World Rebirth, even though the skeleton doesn't really match up too much, but yeah, it's still there. So yeah, th those aren't critiques on dinosaur reconstructions. Those are cr critiques on pad reconstructions. You know, it's poking fun at that. Um, so yeah, to close it all off, I gotta, you know, I gotta state, we don't get things 100% correct. That is obvious, but we do have a good basic understanding of the way anatomy works and the way a lot of these animals look. But there's a lot of instances where, of course, we just can't know. There's a lot of soft tissue out there that probably hasn't preserved. Like, there's a lot of birds today that have these really cool extra soft tissue pieces that you know, they probably wouldn't fossilize if the animal died tomorrow. The same was likely true for non-avian dinosaurs. Like, who knows how many of them had, like, extravagant, like, feather crowns that we just won't find. Or the colors. The colors is a big one because most dinosaurs, we don't know what color they were when they were still alive. Obviously, there are some. There are some that were so well-preserved that the melanosomes are still present, and the, that helps you determine what color they were in life by comparing those melanosomes to the, the ones found on modern-day birds. So dinosaurs like Sinoceropteryx or Borealopelta, or a Microraptor, we know what colors they were in life. But those are very, very rare examples amongst many, many other species of dinosaurs. So most dinosaurs, we don't know what colors they were. So much like that earlier hippo example, the coloration that's applied to them is completely up to the artist. Whatever the artist thinks best fits that, that animal. It's best to kind of like keep things a little bit grounded and base it off of like modern day animals, uh, like something that makes sense for nature, but that still is just a guess right there. But obviously there are some instances where skin is preserved, where feathers are preserved, where in some cases internal organs are preserved. Um, so not always is that guesswork like, you know, T-Rex skin. We know what T-Rex skin looks like. We know what Triceratops skin looks like. We know what Edmontosaurus skin looks like. Um, and, and in some dinosaurs, we know what color they were. You know, it's not all like just shots in the dark in terms of stuff like that. But behaviors as well, behaviors is another tricky one to, to get. There are some instances where behaviors are fossilized, like we have evidence of them in trace fossils, but it's not always. Like we don't always have something like that. So a lot of times behaviors are kind of like, you know, speculative that's very much apparent in documentaries like Prehistoric Planet or in a lesser extent, Walk the Newest Walking with Dinosaurs. But in terms of the whole basic reconstruction and especially the shape of these animals, that's not really guesswork. That's just a lot of work. <laughs> that's just studying what needs to be studied and applying it to your work is what that is. This was just a little bit of a ramble video because I wanted to talk about it. I came across a lot of those images the other day and so I just kind of wanted to put them out there and get your guys' thoughts. Um, basically, what I'm saying here is that we know more than what most people think, but obviously we don't know everything. And we can't say that we know everything. You know, I don't think anyone really ever says that we do. I'm sure some people do, but we don't know everything. There are some things we know but there are a lot of things that we don't know. That is very much apparent. But be sure to let me know your guys' thoughts on this. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on Only Yesterday's. Good book, right? It's a fun book. I like it. Um, yeah, but until next time, thank you so much for watching, and have an awesome day.